James has persuaded me today to go on a moped and drive around the island of Bonaire. Um, there's a little scooter um, car hire place directly opposite where we're anchored here in the bay. See how much it is to hire a scooter for the day and probably explore, what is it, the south side of the island? The south, uh, God, I always get this wrong. Yeah, south side of the island. Southwest side of the island? Yeah. Yeah, God, yeah. good job we don't navigate anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Philippa said that she would never go on a scooter or a moped, um, least of all if I was driving it. So a bit more persuasion has been done today and, um, and now she's up for it. So the best way to see the island is on a scooter and that's what we're gonna do. I did say though that we'd do about 10 miles an hour. Yeah, we're not gonna be doing 10 miles an hour. We're gonna be, we're gonna be doing wheelies and all sorts. Oh my goodness, I was praying that that very loud rev you just heard was not for us. Thank you! Philippa was clearly very nervous about the scooter, but after I promised to keep it under 30 miles per hour, she started to relax. Hello. Hello, little donkey. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, you're very friendly, aren't you? Oh, you. We haven't got any sugar lumps, though. Do donkeys eat sugar lumps? I'm not sure. <laughs> He's not sure Sorry, himself. Sorry, got nothing for you. Oh, we should have saved a bit of bread roll. As we were driving along on the motorcycle, we found this cute little opening and it looks out onto Lack Bay. It's absolutely stunning. <laughs> Always watch where you're walking. Bonaire is famous for its flamingos and after seeing them in Aruba we were keen to see them again in Bonaire and it wasn't long before we heard a squawk coming from the bush. Flamingos get their hot salmon pink colour from the food they eat. Flamingos eat algae which is rich in beta carotene giving them their distinctive colour. This is also why the salt cans of Bonaire are pink, as they are rich in algae. Flamingos typically weigh only one to three kilograms. Look how beautiful it is here. What are you gonna have? Fancy a beer, is it a bit early? No, I think it's early, I'll fancy a beer as well. <laughs> How cool is this, sir? Look at this. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> Cheers. 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 <laughs> We've just checked out the windsurfing, it's looking good and I'm going to be doing a lesson soon, you're going to be doing some advanced lessons. I'm going to be doing an advanced lesson, yes. Yeah. Advanced. <laughs> no, this looks like an absolutely awesome place to do windsurfing, like 
they've probably got like 200 boards or something yeah. ridiculous like there's just windsurf boards everywhere today's not very windy but um, usually the wind pumps here so this is a great place to learn and the wind's on shore so you know if, if you if you if you get into trouble you're just going to float back onto the beach wherever we are on anchor we're always the wind's always offshore because that's the best place to anchor um, but the problem is when you go windsurfing like if anything goes wrong you just get you drift off out to sea and you have to rely on your wife to pick you up and sometimes that's a bit that's a bit iffy sometimes <laughs> James and I just stopped at the side of the road and there's some amazing artwork all the way along here but we're yet to find out why everything is so dilapidated. It looks like it's just been abandoned. Do you think these are the old salt flats? Maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. There's, look, there's areas. Yeah, you might be right. Dream as if you would live forever, love as if you would die today. And that's where we're heading over there. You can see the white mounds in the distance. That is where the salt flats are. And obviously the mounds are the mounds of salt. So I was just reading the sign over there about the legend of this place. So Bonaire, as you can see, is a really, really flat island, especially this side of the coastline. And it wasn't until the 17th century um, that Bonaire had its first lighthouse. So prior to that, ships couldn't see the land and they'd get, um, they'd get washed up on the coral and they'd get shipwrecked. And there's a legend of a, a mermaid, apparently, who sat on a black rock. I don't know if it's that black rock there, but a black rock anyway. And legend has it that she would entice ships to crash on the rocks. And the local people here would, after a storm, they'd come along and they'd find any um, shipwrecks or anything that had been washed up. Uh, any treasure, any bounty, anything like that, they'd, they'd find. And it was apparently called the Coast of the Seven Colours. And apparently there were seven groups of people or villagers or whatever, and they would go and find their salvage and they would put it under a coloured flag. And there were seven different coloured flags. And that's what the people did here. They survived on, um, on the shipwrecks. So I don't know how prosperous it was, but um, quite an interesting story. I think we can see the mermaid. They did say the mermaid had blonde hair. <laughs> I'm not sure she had a crash helmet on though. Are you enticing sailors to crash and shipwreck here? <laughs> James and I were just saying how unbelievable it is, the jaggedness of the rocks if you look how sharp the edges are and that's created from the sea it's just insane how sharp the edges have become Never seen one so tame. No, but he crawled up half up my leg before I realised. Yeah, shame we got any treats for him. What do they eat? Well, not sun cream. <laughs>
days of salt trading, ships would moor outside the reef and small boats would bring their ships salt. Originally, smoky fires were lit on top of mounds of corals to guide the ships into the correct site for loading. There were four pans, each producing a different grade of salt. Later, four obelisks, one orange, one red, one white and one blue, representing the flag of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, were constructed at the salt pans. The ships would know by the colour coded obelisk where to anchor for fetching the grade of salt that they were purchasing. The pans were called orange pan, road pan, witte pan and blau pan. Wow, not much room. No, very depressing. Yeah. So as I understand it, the ships used to anchor here and they used to be loaded up with the salt from the salt flats here. And these are the slave huts. So this is where all the workers lived. Well, all the slaves lived to uh, load up the salts. Pretty, pretty depressing when you look at it. Can you take it? Oh, okay, sure. You can just take a piece. Yeah, maybe maybe tomorrow or on the weekend we have more. Ah, okay. Now we are producer the salt. And is this what it's like inside? Yes. This is what the mounds are. In the they're, they're yes. this, are they this size or are they bigger? No, this is a more or less. Okay. No, 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 bigger. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You for free. Thank you. This is the sample box. <laughs> Load up. When I was younger, my gran always used to say to me, if you take too much salt, chuck it over your shoulder because it's good luck. So, as we know, there's quite a lot of salt here. <laughs> wow. Or which shoulder is it? The left or the I right shoulder? Oh. That hit the lens. <laughs> The 250 acres of land that you can see here look like a patchwork quilt, or maybe a Battenberg cake to some. However, it's anything but sweet. The salt pans can produce 500,000 metric tons of salt per year and is exported around the world, possibly to your dinner table, to places such as Europe, Asia and North America. The salt crystals produced are so large, they are nicknamed the sun gems. As well as producing salt, the facility helps preserve some of the world's most precious nature. talk about salt has made us extremely and, thirsty. Uh, and hungry and hungry I'm starving. Oh this looks amazing look at this yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? wow how cute Absolutely starving. Talking about salt all morning, we are super, super hungry. So we're going to have some amazing lunch and enjoy this magnificent view. So this is what we're having for lunch today. I have a poke bowl. I haven't seen any salt yet, so hopefully we're going to get some salt. And James is. I've having... got like a. Um... What is it? Scampi gratin? It looks really nice. It looks Isn't really it good. good. Yeah. And then it all um, like toasty avocado y tomato y thing. Mmm. Mm. Let's ask for some salt. Bonne salt. 
Let's do this. Only the finest will do. <laughs> Only the best will do. <laughs> That was a really cool spot, wasn't it? It was nice so lunch. beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Apparently they have a DJ, what is it, on a Friday? So I think we'll definitely come back. On a Friday back. and on a Sunday as well. Hang on a second. Are you putting your helmet on over your cap? Yeah, that's what the cool kids do. It's, yeah, it's, a, little, it's a little bit high. Do you look <laughs> like should it's very safe? That's how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> that's better. <laughs> oh, oh we've got a bit of off-road going on here. Look. <laughs> Why are you so short? Swap places for a while. Come on, carry on. My car parcels are killing me now. Next time aboard Equus, I do a solo sail back to Curacao. I meet up with our old friend James from Sailing Zingaro, and I take delivery of a brand new Eldstrom mainsail. <laughs>